um, uh, projects which, um, uh, which were done before uh, they introduced uh, star office. So we, we started um, before 2000. It was uh, um, the, 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 the last month of, uh, of the century. Of the last century, we, uh, we started with uh, Sun to um, think about these um, um, usage of star office in a professional environment, not just to have uh, volunteer users, but to deploy uh, this uh, office productivity suite in professional um, environments. And it was very, very clear, early clear, that this is a um, change management uh, project in, in these uh, professional environments, uh, which faces a lot of uh, technical and non-technical issues. So uh, we started, um, and certainly we have done in combination with Sun, the typical thought and thought just about technology, just about uh, developing solutions, uh, just looking in um, technical issues, technical items and so on, um, and uh, did not uh, have in mind that, as I said, this is a huge change management project. There's a human factor in it. And uh, that a lot of uh, stuff, uh, what is to do, meanwhile we know, is that uh, to have um, the people in mind with it. So this is um, developed through the whole history of uh, all known uh, free and open source productivity suites. As you see, we have uh, one of the um, main tasks we did in the early 2000s is to um, try uh, to develop um, tools um, with which you can automatically migrate a document fold. And, and, and every organization has a lot of documents with which you can automatically migrate them in the new world. In the early uh, stages, is what, it was not the open document format, it was this SV X or something like this, um, but um, a few a few years later there there were uh, the the issue with the open document format. So um, to be honest, uh, we did the, it and we did it for Sun. So the right and the license for these migration um, uh, tools uh, were by by uh, Sun. But to be honest, um, um, we didn't reach that. Why? Because uh, one of the um, problem or one of the uh, uh, problems was that we uh, tried to do the same as we have today, an interpreter for um, uh, BBA macros. And as you all know, today we have something like an BBA uh, uh, interpreter, but it, uh, it's quite a little bit the same problem with it, but on a better stage, on a higher stage. So we did this um, transformation engine um, on a very meta level so that you could take this VBA macros. It was represented in a uh, meta speech, meta uh, uh, form. And then you could choose in which um, um, language this was brought uh, and, and migrated. Uh, with this um, flexibility, and it was uh, in, in mind was the flexibility from Star Office in the early uh, um, years. You, you could also have different macro languages with um, with uh, Star Office, and uh, the popularest was uh, Java. So we tried to do it not just in uh, Open Office, uh, Open Office Basic, but also for Java. So this was the reason why we, we did this meta. Um, migration way. Um, but we learned in, in uh, Paxis that uh, nearly every macro we tried to migrate with these tools did have one or two statements which was not in the model internally. So it was very, very nice to say, okay, we, we, have, an, uh, we have a tool, but um, not one macro of the fault was really 
automated migrate automate with an automation uh, migration in, in uh, the new world and um, there have to be developers and so on uh, who have to work um, with this result to to get it uh, to run so as I said meanwhile we have a better interpreter it is there have uh, a lot of things happened in these uh, history there I have uh, tried to count a little bit how much user we have brought from an proprietary office productivity suite to, um, to a free one. You know, it's, uh, it was not just LibreOffice, it was OpenOffice, StarOffice, and so on. And I counted round about uh, one million users. So we have, in, in the last 20 years, um, uh, seen a lot of uh, use cases and also, to be honest, because we are uh, uh, talking about migration, not every consultancy job we did for migrating or checking, have a feasibility study, uh, was successful. The most problem with it was uh, integration issues. In the early years, uh, it was very, very hard with, with SAP integrations. Uh, so uh, they used a very... Um, high level uh, or deep integration with SAP and uh, Microsoft Office. Uh, it's not so usual uh, these days, but for, uh, for that there are other integrations. So not every feasibility study or every information or pre-migration consultancy was a success in the sense that we brought them to um, to open office or to libre office or, or to star office. Meanwhile, 10 years ago, so I can mention this project, uh, no uh, confidentiality uh, contract is more valid. So I can say one of the biggest um, consultancy uh, we have done for a deployment was for around about 18,000 people in the uh, German Bundesbank. In this time, the, the role of the German Bundesbank, the currency, um, uh, the bank for the currency in Germany was higher than today because it was not the euro, it was the, the uh, D-Mark in, in these days. But um, um, it was uh, nevertheless a, a huge um, a huge project, a juice uh, feasibility study, and this was one example, and I will tell you with what this was um, the problem, um, they decided against it. So they stayed at uh, Microsoft Office. Why? Not because of um, lacking technological issues or something. Yeah, in principle, it was also an... an um, technological issue because these days, 10, 15 years ago, there was not so much accessibility uh, support um, with uh, OpenOffice and with uh, LibreOffice. And they have, or, or we, we, we um, examined uh, that the screen reader in this time didn't have this uh, integration uh, like uh, Microsoft, especially with Microsoft Excel. Calc didn't work uh, so smooth for blind people and so on. And this was uh, one of, of the reasons. So not just technology evolved over the time in both uh, areas, in the proprietary area and in the free and open source productivity suite area. And what we see today is um, that we have uh, a lot of more devices where we do um, office productivity activities. Uh, yes, uh, I have learned that there are some people who are uh, working with, uh, for example, with calc sheets are doing this on such a device. It's unbelievable, but they do it. So it's a very uh, small screen, and uh, I don't know how to do that exactly. But um, yes, we have to deal with, uh, it's more reasonable with these tablets and, and uh, bigger smart uh, devices. Um, 
But we, we have to keep in mind uh, these days when we have uh, migrations that it's not just the uh, offline client anymore, it's also uh, mobile devices and certainly um, in the middle that there is now nowadays the need to, um, to work synchronously on documents via cloud, via browser uh, and so on. And all this uh, have certainly consequences for these feasibility studies and for deployments in uh, professional uh, environments. And uh, as you all know, um, TDF has uh, done for this migration, um, a, a so-called migration protocol, I will show it uh, later, which try to cover all these technological and not non-technological um, problems or um, um, uh, things uh, which have to be covered in, in migration uh, projects. And uh, what I now want to try is to summarize five or six uh, items which I think are uh, nowadays a new one coming out of this new um, state-of-the-art uh, working with, uh, with an Office Productivity Suite and uh, certainly some of them still in uh, still an important one mentioned uh, one I have mentioned already is the human factor uh, that is still an, an absolutely um, cornerstone for successful uh, migrations. So let me start with <laughs> with a contradiction. <laughs> I said to you that nowadays uh, everybody is working with uh, browser, online, cloud, other devices, but desktop client installation is still and will still be there. So it is not an ersetzung, um, uh, it, it is not an, a, a replacement, but it's an uh, um, additional uh, device uh, with it. So. Um, not to, to move the, the scope with the migration, but uh, to have additional devices uh, um, with, with all the documents uh, which have to be available on all devices, even in, in the desktop, and layouting, layouting for different devices have to be uh, done, or if you're doing um, templates on the desktop client, you have to check how these templates are working with these new devices. Um, how do they look? How can you work with them? Uh, and so on. By the way, macro um, issue. If I need a macro, do I need the desktop? Is it working in the browser? We know that uh, Collabora is uh, meanwhile um, um, partially able to run macros also in, in the cloud. It's very, very interesting. It's very, very asked not to differentiate documents between these uh, devices uh, and so on. So one of the issues is uh, this uh, layouting functionality having in the, the document fault um, between these uh, different uh, technological devices. And um, to be honest, if you, if you have a look from where uh, customers with a Microsoft Office um, environment and with, with uh, the Cloud Office uh, uh, MSO365 are coming, I think, and that's what I want to, to address to you, uh, is that our solution in exactly this area, having documents working in different um, devices, is far away from uh, the Microsoft Office uh, solution. I have one customer experienced with uh, trying to eliminate, uh, out of uh, some special reasons, um, try to eliminate first, before they want to change, the client installation, the desktop client installation of Microsoft Office. Just using in browser the Microsoft Office apps. 
It turned out, I, I didn't know that because I <laughs> didn't work a lot with, with, the, with the Microsoft Office apps in, in the cloud, but it turned out that this is a nightmare. Nowadays, to work with Microsoft Office cloud apps is a nightmare. You are lacking WYSIWYG. You have an editor there, but it's not that what is printed out. So you have, for example, you have to change the view before you, you see what is you get out of it. Can say, okay, it's acceptable. But what's not acceptable, for example, in a professional environment is no text frame support. Text frames are not supported in the cloud environment of Word, of Microsoft Office Word. Some are displayed, but at another, at an, at another place. Huh? Don't we have such migrations issues between the two worlds where text frames are placed at another um, position in slides or in, uh, in the uh, letter uh, and so on? So, and, and so much more. Um, uh, for example, um, uh, templates, um, layout templates could be used in, in uh, Microsoft Office um, cloud apps, but not um, maintained, not uh, uh, changed. There's no possibility to change uh, template, um, uh, style templates. It's not working. The, the answer from uh, Microsoft is, okay, uh, if you want to change uh, this or, or you want to do this, please refer to the client app and do it there and then come back uh, and, and you have everything. I think this is a uh, point uh, which is really, really with, with all these online um, uh, versions with LibreOffice technology, underlying LibreOffice technology and Collabora or others, are doing is an argument, is not definitely argument for ours to use and saying, hey, come on, if layout or something or functionality is a problem for you, have a look what you are waiting for in the proprietary area. I mean, certainly Microsoft Office will be able to, to do a lot in this area in a short period. I think in the next one or two years, there will be a lot of efforts to bring this on a uh, same level as the client um, application. But they have still a lot to do what is uh, there for LibreOffice uh, technology. So the second one is, and this is an old one, this is not you. This was uh, from the first day on uh, in migration um, project, a huge issue. It's the right document format. A standard, I do not need to tell you all about this, a uh, free and open um, document standard. Yes, 75 of the world outside is on another um, document format. But to check and to, um, to make feasibility studies with the document format and the documents uh, and customer with 10,000 or 15,000 clients have in its organization and to transfer them in another um, document format, it, it is a huge um, task. It should be done intelligent, not the whole one, just the living documents, but it makes sense to do this migration to an uh, other document format because what we have learned, all learned, of the round trip uh, issues. There are some, still some customers who are doing the following. They are introducing a free and open source LibreOffice technology suite may it be online or may it be a client installation, but saying, hey, come on, LibreOffice is able to uh, import and export Microsoft Office uh, document format, so let's stay with this uh, document format. So everything is uh, fine and uh, it's working. And one of the uh, hardest tasks in such migration 
projects is to convince them that this is one of the worst ideas you can have. You need examples where you can show, so have a look. If you take this um, document, migrate it to the uh, LibreOffice or to the world technology of LibreOffice. You have something to do. You see, I've mentioned these text frames and so on. If you are now exporting this same document in the Microsoft Office document format, what is happening the next time? You have to do it again. And if you have some experience in this round trip um, uh, journeys, you can, you can uh, find crazy, crazy things. Um, dependent on how often and uh, via which way you have uh, done these round trips, exported, imported, exported, imported, they are looking totally different. And this is one um, very, very um, important uh, item of every migration to have the right document format strategy. Certainly you have to cope that there are some external partners of this uh, entity with which you have to communicate with a Microsoft Office document, and, uh, document format. But um, you, can, you can cover this via templates or uh, most of these processes uh, typically are not um, done with editable uh, documents. It's enough to exchange PDFs or something like this, and so on. To be honest, there's one new development in, in this area. I will mention this later again. Um, this is this synchronous um, editing of documents. As far as you are in one um, entity, um, technology or document format is no problem. But if it goes out of your if you are do, doing synchronous editing with um, an outside people, it becomes uh, definitely an, an, an issue, an item. Then you, you not just have the document format item, you also have uh, an, the either techno, technological icon, uh, item that it could be that there are two technology worlds come on the same document and, and you have to uh, care about, uh, for example, conflicts, editing conflicts, how to handle editing conflicts and so on. Yes, it's, it's possible to do that from two te technological sides, um, but there are new problems which uh, uh, should be solved uh, and in processes and technology and so on. This is perhaps a little bit a special item in Europe, much more in Germany, but uh, also in, in Europe. These uh, buzzword digital sovereignty with this combined with the document format I've uh, explained, uh, which should be transparent, full transparent, uh, with the cloud um, uh, functionalities. Um, giving the content into a uh, cloud uh, where someone else, uh, you have signed that they have the right to use the content, pictures, texts, and, and so on. This is nowadays, especially for governmental uh, customers, a uh, big, big, big issue. So what they are doing, <gasps> I've understood, I have a problem. If I go to Microsoft Office uh, 365, I don't know exactly what's happening between local and uh, cloud and uh, what, which data is flowing there, what are they doing with my uh, content, even if they say, yes, we are doing this in German um, Rechenzentren, um, data centers, in German data centers or European data centers, which are certified GDPR-like, which is, there is no certification for GDPR-like. There's no entity who qualifies this. Um, even there, it is not clear if, um, if, if something is going over the internet, uh, what can be done with this uh, data. So they all, meanwhile, they all um, understood we have a problem. A problem with digital sovereignty, with login, 
even with login, if I use Microsoft Office document format and, and so on. Okay, what's happening? I come to a customer, governmental customer, and say, okay, come on, guy. I've understood you have the solution for being digital sovereign. I want to be digital sovereign. When can, can I do it? I need this in three months, and all the integrations with Microsoft Office uh, should be working in three months. So do it now and do it all. There's a huge, huge, huge expectation um, in open source, in LibreOffice, in especially in LibreOffice technology. We have to fulfill and the, the window of opportunity is, if, if my expectation is right, at maximum two years. If we have in, in, not in two years the same integration level like Microsoft Office, for example, with SAP or something else, um, then we will be out. Then they will say, okay, Microsoft is guaranteeing me more or less digital sovereignty with the data center in, in Europe. You are not able to do this because you have uh, to develop such integration uh, layer and, and so on. Um, I have no chance. I have, I have to do uh, to buy them because uh, I have to do my work there. Yeah, but they are arguing if you are doing not all the same now in the sense of one-stop shopping, it's, it's another dimension, in the sense of one-stop shopping, I don't want to talk to you as LibreOffice, as TDF, and to the next mail uh, solution, to the next and so on. If you, are, if you can't do this in, in one or two years, I want that, you, you, uh, that, that there can be digital sovereignty, but I'm forced uh, to buy them. And they are, they are guaranteeing me that they will be digital sovereign. No, they're guaranteeing you the opposite. But there's, there are zero Yes, you are right. There is a contradiction, but they're accepting it. Because I can say, if they say they are um, digital sovereign, I can buy them. They, they're pushing the responsibility, even if they know that this is a very, very weak uh, thing, away. That's the contradiction, you're right. That's it. So let's keep in mind this is really an, an, um, a, a cornerstone in migrations. Um, if you are, uh, no migration is a 100% Big Bang migration. It's a, it's a way, and you have uh, some, some use cases left where you need some proprietary uh, productivity suite, uh, suites and if, if you can't give the, the, the vision that this will be uh, reduced in one or two years, um, you are out. Yeah, that's what, I, what I've already mentioned. Another issue, which was 20 years ago, no issue, no item, is this uh, thing that uh, online collaboration, uh, in the sense of synchronous uh, working on the same document, is is coming up more and more important. Best was that um, uh, also OpenOffice and LibreOffice has had uh, the functionality if you have this, the document on your uh, network, you, you have, could have uh, contacted from two instances and worked together there. And um, in the early years, I always asked, okay, show me the process where they asked, is LibreOffice uh, able to do this? And so, yes, it is uh, able to do this. But first of all, show me the process in your company or in your governmental area where you need this. And mostly everywhere, they have really to, to choose process and ask you, who's using this functionality? Who's using this? We need this and uh, we need some use cases. There was none. There was a bank, <laughs> a, a huge bank, which is not existing anymore, um, 
who were doing his uh, investment banking on a sheet, on an Excel sheet, synchronously over 24 hours, uh, um, pushing it uh, in different locations uh, where they, uh, they have protocol their transaction. This was the only real-time synchronous editing process I, uh, I uh, discovered uh, years ago. But this have changed, definitely. This have changed, definitely. There are a lot of co-editing processes, for example, contracts, which are um, in video conferences are worked on contracts, uh, 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 formulating uh, sentence, uh, legal binding uh, words and, and sentences uh, synchronously. And this is done via online collaboration, sometimes uh, with uh, smart devices. So this, um, this new device or this upcoming kind of work, simultaneous work, um, comes with other functionality. We not usually have in mind when we come from a desktop uh, client. For example, I mentioned one is this uh, conflict um, healing. If two persons are working on the same word or on the same cell in Calc, we have to do something with that. So new functionality is, is have to be brought in. Or the most um, combination of online work comes with file sharing, next cloud, own cloud. Uh, give me another example. So the only one uh, I have in mind now. You, you know uh, what I mean. And with this file sharing, um, you have um, new functionalities you have to, to, um, to have in mind if you are migrating from Microsoft Office. What is with, um, with um, remarks for files? What is um, uh, with versions of a document? Uh, and so on. So if you are migrating from one world to the other, you have to, uh, to do feasibility uh, things, technological things, um, also in combination with this file sharing um, uh, item uh, with a migration. Ah, uh, another thing with, which is coming up more and more uh, with this online co collaboration is uh, very important because it is one uh, big argument pushing back this migrations is UI. Resistance of change, the, 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 the last one I will show, the last item is this resistance of change of users, but uh, the most broad argument is, oh, this is a completely other UI and I have to, to, uh, to train and to, uh, to remember um, on which uh, UI I am and I have to learn that this functionality is on another place and so on. There's something cooking up in um, this UI area in, in combination with this uh, problem that we now have this kind of similar uh, user interface uh, with ribbons, but um, to be honest, if you have some experience with a notebook bar, it's not the same um, um, complete functionality uh, uh, having uh, via the, the notebook bar. So the question is, the most of the, the people nowadays want to migrate are saying, okay, I want to use this notebook bar. And then I have seen, for example, I've seen some documents uh, which have recorded macros from the client uh, uh, installation with the old UI, which are no longer working with the notebook bar because parts of this recorded macros are using UI um, tracking uh, uh, things. And there are a lot of things is working because it's on object level, it's, it's uh, uh, interacting with uh, document objects, but some things are really, uh, you, you bring the mouse from here to here and, and so on. And um, there are some problems with the no new notebook bar. And even more, if you, uh, have, if you remember that we have not just the desktop um, installation, but perhaps uh, 
uh, a LibreOffice community installation on the desktop, on the browser and um, Collabora uh, online, and perhaps on a smartphone, an, an app. Then you have three different user interfaces, not so much different, but different. And it seems to be very confusing for users to have all these in mind. We have often support uh, issues asking, well, I thought this functionality is in the client there and there. Why do I am not finding this functionality in uh, this uh, area of, of the other device and so on? Or why is it missing? Another uh, issue. So I think this is a very, very important um, item because what I've said, the, always the, the argument, if someone do not want to change office productivity is, the first argument is, it's a new UI and I, don't, I, I will start from zero and with this confusion, we gave them arguments. So my pleasure is, uh, my, my, um, my pleasure, even my pleasure, but uh, my, my, uh, my preference would be to, to more harmonize this um, on the uh, different uh, devices so that this argument is not so uh, big. Where are we in time? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, this is a very, very interesting uh, item, even on this conference, because I've learned uh, this morning, uh, two, two talks about uh, AI support in Office uh, Productivity Suite. Nowadays, there are, is, seems to be a lot um, in combination with ChatGPT, so generated um, artificial intelligence. Uh, this, um, this is a little bit beyond this, because if you have user experience with a new Microsoft Office clients, even in, in um, cloud, that there is a uh, so-called co-pilot functionality. What is more or less behind, um, it's layouting, uh, the, um, what they are doing is learning from your um, usual editing, layouting, mostly seen in uh, PowerPoint or um, uh, slide uh, doing, and um, proposing some layouting to you. There's a designer, design assistant, where you can click, with one click, have the same design on different slides, or uh, your graphic is um, layouted uh, similar to others in, on, the, uh, on other slides. So there is, as co-pilot, not just in, in interacting with a uh, chatbot, but uh, co-piloting layouting functionality. The good one is, and that's what, uh, what uh, Microsoft Office uh, users are saying, wow, that's helping a lot. With one tip, I got an, uh, a nice uh, layouting, even in, in text um, editing. The bad one, but it, that is very hard to explain in the first uh, row, um, they, they are doing the layouting functionality obscure. Nobody else, uh, no, nobody knows anymore how to use or to build a style format because it's done uh, automatically from, from uh, this uh, AI bot. So if you are forced to do it by your own, you have to look, uh, okay, there are uh, temp style templates and how can I uh, use them, how can I define them and so on. So layout functionality is, is going with this uh, co-piloting AI, um, making, making layout functions more obscure. But the user is enjoying this, absolutely. I've really nobody heard who's not saying that. With a combination, with a combination, even this co-pilot, and then we are again um, near this, this chat uh, GPT things, they have a lot of uh, work done to help the uh, user via asking, how can I do this, how can I do this? And this will be 
in, in migration, or is, is nowadays a problem to not have, or not in this quality, uh, to have this functionality, AI-based uh, functionality uh, in our world. With the, uh, uh, um, with the reason, okay, I have to, t to, uh, to invest more costs in draining and so on, which I, am, uh, I do not have in the Microsoft area because of this uh, AI uh, support. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's, there's happening something. Uh, thanks God, uh, there's happening something. It, it, this will address exactly this uh, item uh, a little bit. I, I just want to, to give some examples what is going on and as new uh, uh, road blockers in migration and for which we have to care, as you said. We have yeah. to find solutions uh, for that because these are arguments against migrations. And last uh, but not least, this is uh, from Italo, the most uh, showed uh, uh, graphic. It's the human factor, the resistance of change. Still, since I've uh, written old as humankind, something new, I have something new to learn, Go away, I want to use that, what I have uh, used 20 years ago, uh, and so on. So, um, to, to go through this curve, this Kupler-Ross curve, change curve, first you have everybody against you, then there is uh, depression and uh, they realize, oh shit, I can't do anything against this migration, so I have to learn um, this and getting more and more um, the, the people, the user on you, the more invest in having the, these in mind, having the users in mind, the better it, uh, it works. And um, the more you find users who are relatively quick in these areas here, the better the migration is working. You, ha you can use them for train the trainer concepts to go out to have um, know-how um, uh, people with know-how in it and typically can be asked from other uh, users and so on. So this is a factor and, and I always say in, in, in at this uh, point nearly, this is an, an um, examination or an, 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 um, an ob observation, nearly 50% 50 50 of all costs of migration are going in this factor. Nothing technological, 50% of migration costs are going in this factor. Training, information, respecting, uh, seeing what they are doing, uh, convincing that there is another way to do that, this, and so on. Sorry? You're saying that only 50% of migration efforts go into what you just described, but isn't, shouldn't it be, or I, I would assume it would be closer to 100%. Uh, if, if you come from the, from the point in, in the beginning, what I've told in the beginning, that, um, that these migration projects are seen totally as only technological projects to migrate um, document format to uh, to have solutions for integration issues and so on. Then 50% is a lot. You, you can say that every euro which is going in the migration is in combination with this uh, item. But if you say, okay, if you have really uh, programming for integration which has not an, any um, issue with the end user, this is perhaps in the other 50%. The message behind is don't underestimate the end user. This is the message behind, even in, in costs. <laughs> Open source is not uh, for free. My experience in such deployments in large corporation is that uh, the technical issues are the easiest to fix. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, it's much more a um, um, behavior change uh, than any specific technical technical issue. So more than 50 yeah, percent. Yeah. 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 Fully agree with you. If you don't focus on the end user, it will fail. Yeah. But does that strictly translate to training people or to extra activity in relation with you? Sorry, sorry again. Does those fifty percent translate to training exclusively or other aspects? No, other also other aspects. It, it's a lot of information and training on different level. Communication. Communication, information, communication, a lot. Um, it starts mostly uh, uh, going to, to end users explaining that we also have something like an UI for editing. There are some users really thinking about that they have to a uh, command line uh, tool. Where this comes from, I don't <laughs> really don't know, but they have the impression if they have to, to change uh, Word for uh, uh, writer for Word, they have to do something on a command line. I don't know where it comes from, but this is an example. So um, other things like um, uh, like you mentioned, uh, trainings for different levels. It's um, in in some environments, it's the first time that you gave uh, trainings for Office Productivity Suites. This has two sides. First one is uh, there are some users who are using this because they can learn something, they can use know-how, um, uh, share this know-how with others, and the other way around. There are some users in Microsoft Office uh, who have this know-how who are often asked from others. Example. Um, I have to be careful because uh, if you know where I'm living, <laughs> you, can, you can transform to the customer. I have an, an, a customer, there was a woman, she was near the management manager director and she did an, um, a, a, sl a slide presentation um, in an, like a video. She, she tapped on, on the, on the uh, laptop and then it, it shows in a PowerPoint presentation how the production process of this company uh, was doing. And she was totally uh, against um, migration because she was uh, in this position uh, because of this know-how of PowerPoint. And she was fearing losing this know-how with a migration. So what have we done? We took a USB with a LibreOffice on the portable and um, go there and convince there. So take your PowerPoint, let it uh, uh, run on, um, on Empress, uh, and we will see. It was a risky, a risky thing to do that. Guess what? It ran. And we, we have win a um, an promoter for, for, for this migration on a, on a very important level. So these are all things, information, communication, taking fears away, um, which are in these uh, 50%. Yeah, more, uh, it's interactive. Let me take him first. First of all, to be honest, to take this with respect and uh, care. You don't have to, uh, you, you should not ignore that. You have to, as, as we have done with this uh, women, um, to have a look 
which processes are behind there and, and searching for solutions. Sometimes there's a solution for, for not having an editable uh, document format. Sometimes there might be the, the um, uh, need that you need an, um, still a uh, Microsoft Office suite for doing special functionality, but this must be definitely uh, proven that this is uh, needed for that. So um, respecting this fear, addressing it with solutions, and accepting if it is really a cornerstone or an, 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 a blocker. where you are in your presentation, but Not so far, yeah. I really would like to hear your thoughts about only Office. Well, only Office will not be in uh, part in, in, in the rest of the, the, of the thing. I have an opinion, but we can discuss it uh, later on. Okay. I, I don't will discuss this in, in, in a huge uh, thing. Yes, I, I, five minutes discussion, and then I have to show five minutes the slides about the certification. Okay, Sorry. So also, uh, to bring uh, enrichment of this uh, presentation, uh, one of the experience that we had also uh, in a very large company that has a very large help desk, and uh, we had to train the help desk. Definitely, and definitely. The help desk to be on your side and not spread noise about the issues. And interestingly, it's a very special kind of training for supporters. Yes. A very special kind of training for supporters. Yes, I've not mentioned all the items, I've just took out what I thought is, is, is very, but this is a very, very important thing, yes. Okay, so let me use the last minutes uh, for doing the. the, the the job uh, promoting our certification. So this is the picture I've mentioned. Uh, this is the protocol um, which uh, TDF um, empfehlen. Recommend. Recommend. Thank you. Rec which is recommended from from the uh, TDF for doing migrations. This looks a little bit like step by step. Certainly, this is not in this sequential way, but it covers uh, mostly all tasks you have to do uh, with such a migration. Which certificates, um, uh, what, I, uh, what I've not mentioned, why is TDF doing uh, these certification in this way? Because that was the reason I have um, uh, given the talk with new items uh, in the migration so that we want to have something like a quality seal giving um, from TDF, from a neutral position for, for professional customers showing, okay, if you have um, certified TDF certified professionals in these three areas, you can be sure that they are quality proven, that this is not a newbie or that he all of these items have somewhere uh, discovered and have solutions for it. And if there's a new one, there's a bridge to the community, to the project, uh, which can uh, work together, for example, for new uh, functionalities or giving solutions, transferring solutions, be transparent about this and so on. So there are three kind of uh, Certifications, professional developer, I summarize now the, the, the uh, slides after that. Um, certified developers are um, uh, people who are able to cover um, source code changes um, and uh, the heavy one, who are able to do third level support for um, uh, doing uh, bug um, uh, fixing uh, and so on. And this is a dedicated process to get such a uh, certification. Um, the committee which is uh, meeting in the other room is, uh, is the, uh, the, the committee who invites these known people uh, out of, uh, out of the, um, the commits. They are seeing which of these uh, developers are able to be certified and could be uh, doing such services for uh, professional environments. The others are a little bit uh, different, handle professional migrators and professional trainers. We are, as I said, we are qualifying uh, proven 
um, know-how, so it is not a, a, an, a certification you can learn from the beginning. Typically, you have uh, uh, you have know-how in such migration pro, uh, processes in, in any organization, and we are doing um, a verification of this know-how out of information and documents you are presenting a committee out of uh, three or four people and uh, explaining what you have done, discussing and um, verifying uh, the ability or if it is there, um, the, con the contacts uh, to the projects and, and uh, to people of uh, TDF and, and so on to do this, what I have mentioned. If there are some items which are out of range, then uh, you have a backup group where this could be, could be handled. What is else there? that I've mentioned, developer I've mentioned. There are some uh, links where you can uh, doing an application form and afterwards this process starts. So we asked you to present these documents, verifying such know-how. Um, if we are convinced that the, you are a candidate, then we ask you to go in a uh, review session with three or four um, already certified people out of a committee uh, doing something like a talk one hour about your project, about your know-how, and afterwards we decide if you are granted this certification for migrator, professional migrator or trainer. Did I forget something? No, uh, but we, we have, uh, for special cases, we have uh, a basic certification which is called LibreOffice certified, so it doesn't provide any specific area. We have only one person that is in that area. It's a special case. It's an American person living in uh, Eswatini, which is uh, one of the, uh, the, the black countries in South Africa. It was called Swaziland before. Uh, he is uh, uh, <laughs> uh, no, just to give some context, he, uh, he is providing uh, refurbished computers to the schools in Eswatini, where of course uh, they don't have a, a, a large income, uh, so they, he, they, he basically brings the used computers from the States and he reinstalls everything. Uh, yeah. uh, and installs LibreOffice, and uh, but it's not. Uh, he, he, he wanted to have a LibreOffice certified to be eligible in front of the Ministry of Education. It's more more showing the recognition of TDF for these people which are using this in their community. This is a slightly different uh, this is purpose. An option. Uh, of course, it's not professional. But it's an option. Uh, for instance, uh, if you know people in your countries that is doing promoting your office in schools or in that, uh, we can, and if it needs a recognition, that is a step that we can do with this person. Uh, actually, Lothar and me, we are supposed to do a uh, uh, training uh, in uh, Sri Lanka in early November, a workshop. Uh, and the people that will uh, follow this workshop will get the basic certification, not a professional one. Thank you. If there are still questions afterwards in person. Thank you.